At the time of this recording, the U.S. House of Representatives has passed a DGI drone ban for the second time. The Countering CCP Drones Act moves to place DJI on the FCC's covered list, potentially denying consumers the ability to buy and operate DJI drones here in the U.S. So, with the possibility of DJI becoming banned here in the United States, many people are looking for alternatives and are concerned with the lack of good options. Well, good news. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you a new drone that shoots 4K video it has a three-axis gimbal for stable video footage, and it comes in around $300, so it won't break the bank. Let's get into it. So all the footage you just saw was filmed on this drone here. This is the Potensic 4K Atom drone. It's a small, uh, compact drone, as you can see. It has a three-axis gimbal here for stable video footage. And so it has all the similar features that you would expect with a modern drone. I love the fact that it's small and compact. In fact, when I close the legs, You can see it fits in the palm of my hand, which is great for traveling. So for the rest of the video, we're going to run through some of the features of the drone, uh, what comes in the box. We're going to talk about uh, the, the controller, the app, which is how you control the drone. We're going to talk about some of the things that I don't like about it or some things I wish uh, could be approved on in future versions. And then lastly, we'll talk about who I think this drone is for. So, first of all, let's talk about some of the features. So, it is uh, under 250 grams, which means you do not have to register it with the FAA as long as you are flying uh, with it as a hobbyist. So, that's great. Again, small, compact. I really like that for traveling. Uh, you can put it in a backpack. Uh, I also like that because when I'm flying in foreign countries, I don't want to draw like a lot of attention to myself. Um, I don't know. It's just something weird about flying other countries. Even though I'm flying within the regulations, I just don't want a lot of attention to what I'm doing. And so I like having a small drone that doesn't attract a lot of attention. Now we'll go over this later, but the interface um, to the drone, uh, the app that you download is very intuitive. Uh, I like that. If you've flown any other drones before, when you see it, you'll be like, okay, yeah, I know what this does. Um, I didn't even read the instructions, and I was able to get it up and running in a couple of minutes. And the manufacturer, Potensic, boasts a 32-minute flight time and a range of 6 kilometers. I have not fully tested that out uh, myself, but that is what they claim. Now, for the video mode, you have what's called Quick Shots, and it comes with five of them. Uh, they are Pull Away, Rocket, Circle, Spiral, and Boomerang. Uh, if you're not familiar with quick shots, uh, basically it's like a pre-programmed uh, movement where you don't have to fly the drone manually. You just pick a quick shot and hit go, and it will do it do its thing all by itself. So those are always fun to play around with, and especially like orbit. Uh, that's the one I probably use the most. Um, I have, when I have a subject in the center of the frame, I can just draw a box around it and hit go, and it'll automatically rotate around that object. Um, I really enjoy using that one. Uh, so you can feel free to play around with those, but that's pretty cool that it comes with those options. It also has uh, visual tracking. So for instance, let's say I was standing in a field. I could point the drone at myself, uh, touch the screen, draw a box around myself, and then start walking. Uh, and then the drone will just follow me and track me. So that's pretty cool as well. You also have the option to fly via waypoints. So basically what that means is you can define two or more coordinates on your map and the drone will automatically fly to those waypoints. Lastly, in case anything goes wrong, it has what's called a return to home feature. And so that's really helpful in case your battery is getting low or gets disconnected from the controller. It will automatically return back to its 
home point. If you purchase the Flymore combo, you'll get a nice carrying case, which contains everything you need to get started. You'll get the drone, a controller, and three batteries with a parallel charging hub. It also comes with extra propellers, cables, instructions, and an SD card. To turn on the drone, flip it over, and you'll see a button. You press it once, and then press it again and hold until you hear the beep. To turn on the controller, there's a button on the left-hand side. You do the same thing. You press it once, and then press it again and hold until you hear the beep. Before your first flight, you're going to make sure you charge up the batteries, charge the controller, and then download the Potensic app on your phone, which is available for iPhone and Android. Lastly, be sure to insert the included SD card in the back of the drone. Okay, so here's the Potensic controller. Notice it will extend out, and that way it will fit any phone that you put into it. So the trick here is to put the cable into the phone first. This is a lightning cable on one end, and USB-C on the other end. So we'll put the this end of the phone in first, and then we'll pull it out. And there we go. So now the phone is snug and secure in the controller. And then we take our USB-C end and plug that into the controller. Okay, so now the phone is hooked up to the controller. We have our antennas, we have our joysticks uh, here on the top, and we're ready to go. Okay, so we're out here with the Potensic Atom drone. This is the first flight. So here's the drone. Uh, it's a quadcopter. It's pretty small. I mean, the size of my hand, right? Um, it's got a, got a camera on the front with a gimbal. And so this is the first flight. Let's see how it flies. We'll do a couple of small moves here just to test the uh, joysticks, make sure they work okay. Oh, and down. Okay. Yeah, see it be working so far, so good. All right, here we go. So that was the first flight with the Potensic Atom drone. Uh, so far, so good. Nothing uh, was crazy. Didn't fly away. Didn't crash. We didn't crash it, so that's good. And uh, all the controls are pretty similar to any other drone that you've flown before. So the we'll talk a little bit more later about the uh, the display here on the phone. But everything's pretty intuitive as far as uh, doing video or photo or switching back and forth. Okay, so here's the controller and the app. Um, you need to download the app and able to fly the drone. The controller does not come with its own screen, so you have to plug in your phone and then download the Potentic Atom app. And this is what it looks like. So the first time you download the app, you have to create an account. And then the first time you connect it to your drone, you'll have to do a compass calibration which is pretty self-explanatory. As you go through it, it'll tell you exactly how to do it. Basically, just rotate it a couple times, and you're done. So once everything is connected and turned on, you just hit uh, Enter Device right here, and it will connect to your drone. And... Okay, so here is the app. Now, if you've flown drones before, this is going to look pretty similar, but if not, that's okay. We're going to go through it step by step. And we're going to start with the top here, right here, and then work our way around clockwise. 
So the very first thing you see here is this little icon here. It looks like a little camera on a gimbal and it has the number zero next to it. And that refers to the pitch of the gimbal. So on the controller, on the top left here, when I rotate this wheel, uh, it, it rotates the gimbal. And so if you watch that number there, it'll start going down into the negatives as I rotate the gimbal down. And then as I rotate it back up, you see it go into a positive number. Okay, and then I'm assuming that if I go down to zero, that is perfectly horizontal and straight across on the horizon. Okay, so that's, uh, that's pretty easy. All right, the next thing we see here is the, uh, a circle with the letter V in it. And this is referring to the different flight modes that the drone comes with. The three flight modes are video mode, normal mode, and sport mode. The main difference between these three modes is the speed. When you first turn the drone on, you'll be in what's called beginner mode, and that the default for that speed is video mode, which has a max of six meters per second. Normal mode has a max speed of 10 meters per second, and sport mode has a max flight speed of 16 meters per second. So you would switch over to the different modes depending upon the situation you want to fly in. Okay, moving on, we see that we have GPS lock. Right now I have uh, 16, 17 satellites. The RC icon is referring to the remote controller strength. So that's telling me that the signal is good. The connection between the RC and the drone, the connection is good. Okay, so the green circle tells me how much is left on my battery. So I have 84% left. And then to the right of that, it's not showing now because I think because I'm not in flight mode because the drone's not flying. But right here, what I really like about this app is it will tell you how many minutes of flight time you have left. Uh, I really like that feature. I really appreciate that. I haven't seen that before in other drones because honestly, 84% uh, doesn't really tell me a whole lot, especially when it gets down to like 30% or 20%. Does that mean I have five minutes left to fly or 15 minutes or two minutes? I don't know. So I really like this feature. Okay, moving down below that, you see uh, we're currently in video mode. So this icon here is photo, this is video. So right now we're shooting at 4K at 24 frames per second. Our exposure is balanced at zero and the SD card has two hours and 20 minutes left. Of storage. Now I can uh, click on that and then modify that to 2.7K 1080p. I can also change it to uh, 25 frames per second, 30 frames per second. Okay, so I have those options. And then I can also adjust the exposure using this little dial here. This is your exposure compensation, compensation adjustment. Now, here you have the A, and that stands for automatic. So right now, the drone is uh, automatically uh, going to adjust the exposure for me based upon the conditions of the environment I'm flying in. So if it's super bright and sunny, it's going to auto-adjust that exposure compensation to try to get a balance to be uh, not overblown or overexposed. Now I have the option here if I want to click that. And now I have full control. I'm in manual mode now. And you'll see these other options popped up. I'll do it again. So automatic and manual. So now I have control of the ISO, the shutter speed, and the white balance. So next to that we have the this blue button is on video, so I click that, and it will then go to photo mode. And when I want to take a photo, I just push this button here, and I just took a photo. Okay, so now I'm back in video mode, and to just start a recording for a video, just click the red button. And now you see that it's recording, and when I'm ready to stop recording, just you click on it again. You also have the option on the controller to 
uh, start and stop recording using these buttons on the side. So this is for this is for photo and this is for video. So okay, the quick shots mode includes five different options, and the first one is called pull away. Then we have rocket, circle, spiral, and boomerang. If you want to see what you've already shot in the past, you click this button here, and this is your gallery. So this will connect to the media on your hard drive, and you have the options to choose photos or your videos, and you can play those from the app. Let's go back. <clears throat> right here, you have your distance and your height and your speed. That's really that is really crucial information to to know because uh, he, if you're if you're really far away and your battery is getting low, you need to check that to see how far away you are. If you're pretty far away, you might want to kick into sport mode and bring it back quickly. In the bottom left corner, we have the map. I like their map. Um, it has it's kind of like Google Maps. <clears throat> You have different options for the viewing, so you can click this button here and do like a standard map. And then you can click it again for satellite and then click it again. And you have a hybrid of the two, the two map options. So takeoff <coughs> is very simple. You click this button here and it says swipe right to take off. So all you have to do is push and slide over and the drone will automatically take off in the air, uh, and it's super easy. It just takes off in the air all by itself, and then you have full control of it to take off and fly from there. Okay, so let's talk about some of the negatives of the drone or things that it's missing or things that I wish it had. First off, it doesn't have any obstacle avoidance sensors. Um, it does have sensors, but these are not for obstacle avoidance. These are for positioning and knowing uh, the height off the ground. Um, so if you're a beginner, first of all, if you're a beginner flying your drone, uh, I guarantee you will crash your drone. And so while I do think this is a great drone for beginners, just be aware that it does not have any sensors that are going to, or no bells or whistles are going to go off if you get close to a tree. As far as the footage, uh, it's okay. I mean, it's 4K. Uh, it's okay. I don't. I wouldn't say the the sensor is the best. It, it it doesn't shoot in any kind of flat log profile. So all the contrast and highlights and saturation and shadows is all baked in into the footage. And so whatever it records is what you get. And so uh, that means the dynamic range is not that great if you're shooting in a really high contrast scene where you have a bright sun or uh and then dark shadows you know like things will be silhouette and so uh so i really like to see uh, in future versions some sort of log profile which gives you more flexibility and post to adjust the highlights and the shadows and the colors right now as far as i know no one is making any third-party accessories for this drone like if you went in prop guards or indie filters uh, I haven't seen anything online yet, so hopefully in the future, potentially we'll come out with those things or other people will start creating third-party uh, aftermarket products for it. Now, I did take some photos with it, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, the camera is only 12 megapixels, so uh, honestly not that great. Um, a lot to be desired there with the photos I shot. Um, I shot on a bright sunny day and I was seeing a lot of noise in the footage and the image. Um, and, you know, typically you see a lot of noise in the shadows, but I was seeing noise even in the mid-tones and the highlights. So not to, not to impress with the photos, I would like to see uh, potentially boost up those megapixels in future drones. Okay, who is this drone for? I think it's probably great for beginners, primarily because it's affordable. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, you will crash your drone, especially if you're a beginner. And uh, if you do crash your drone, you're only out uh, about 300 bucks. And so it wouldn't, be, uh, it wouldn't kill you to go get another one in case you, in case you crash it. Um, like I said, if you're not doing any, if you're not trying to make money with it or you're not shooting high-end commercials, 
since it doesn't shoot in any kind of log profile, um, if you're just doing it for fun, it's perfect. Um, if you're just doing it as a hobby, it's perfectly fine. It's a great drone to learn on and practice with. And, you know, you can always upgrade later with more expensive, <clears throat> more expensive drones with more features and log profiles and things like that. But I think if you're just starting out, it's a great drone uh, to pick up. Okay, I think that's it for now. If you want to pick up one of these drones, I'll leave a link to it in the description below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.